Hello, hello, and welcome or welcome back to my channel. So I had a time this weekend because all of my girlies released, so you know I was having a good time. And I did want to talk about all three of the girls' singles, so I'm going to do a like sort of round robin style. I haven't done one of these in a while where I just talk about the new releases I want to talk about together in one video, but for the sake of time, I thought this would be the best way to do it because like I said, I want to talk about all of them. But since I am talking about multiple artists in the same video, timestamps are here. That way you can pick, choose, sift through. But honestly, get into all of them because I did. So let's go ahead and talk about the singles. I don't know why I only thought we were getting two singles for Radical Optimism because I was like, mm, let's do about to do for two months. But I obviously just made that up. And off rip from the thumbnail she posted, I was like, ooh, we are finally going outside. This must be the single that she's going to push for the summer. Because Houdini was in that dance studio, training season was in the cafe. So now with Illusion, we have finally walked out the doors. I also love the color contrast with the red and the turquoise and her finally going full red to match the red hair. And from the first shot, I was like, ooh, this is so American apparel. And honestly, I've been thinking that throughout this whole era with a lot of the cover arts and with the specific lettering that she's taken on this era, because she does change her font style with each album. And lyrically, we're getting another single girl anthem. She said her man was a red flag. She had on rose colored glasses, red references, and she looks good. Put my lover on a pedestal. In the end, those things just don't last. And the illusion in question is the man playing games with her and playing games in general and just trying to come off as better than he is. I love this video. I watched it a bunch of times. It feels very bright, very crisp, but it also feels very hot and hazy. Like there's this punch of brightness that wasn't really present in the other songs and you can really see it's giving spring, summer, charade vibes here. And Dua did say that this was the song where that radical optimism concept really started coming together and I feel like you can feel it in the production. Again, this is Kevin Parker and Daniel Harrell. And after that first note in the chorus drops, the whole song just overtakes you. It feels like it's being forced on you almost. And the very faint dance all nights that do a singing and the backing vocals are kind of like a subliminal message that are keeping you out on the floor for one more song, which ends up being 20. My favorite part in the production are those strings in the pre-chorus that sound like a question mark or like Dua's making a statement and then afterwards someone's responding, oh really? And funnily enough, I did notice that they're also present in the acapella version of the song, so maybe they're not strings, maybe it's some vocals with some effects on it, I'm not sure. And then back to the video, at the part after the second chorus when she was climbing up that mountain of men, you could tell in the music it was building up for a good dance break and I was hoping that it was going to come and I was right and I was pretty satisfied. But for the most part, I was just like, wow, Dua really has gotten better at dancing and I feel like these music videos having actual choreography and choreography that's in pace with the song, it really does keep the energy up. We got it towards the end of the Houdini music video and I do feel like that's something that was really missing from what we ended up getting for the training season video. I hope these are more or less like the same group of dancers in all the videos and even the live performances do is done too because they're putting in the work and if they are the same dancers I bet it's really fun to get to do all of these formations and all of these practices and get to look back on all of these music videos and live performances you did. And looking at some clips and stills of her performances it seems like it so I hope they're having fun. Also, there is a part in the song where Dua sings, I still like dancing with the lessons I've already learned. And because she's hitting these dance breaks now, she learned how to dance, she took her little lessons. But obviously going with the theme of the song, it's also definitely her basically saying, oh, even though my relationships don't always work out, I'm not afraid to get back out there, but I do it smarter this time. But I did also notice there's a sense of, yeah, I'm smarter, but I'm not always wiser. Because several times she alludes to having grown in some ways, knowing that men play games. Because she does say several times, who do you think you're confusing and do you know what you're doing? But later in the bridge of the song, Dua sings, I just want to dance with the illusion. So like able to see the person for who they are, know what game they're up to, but you're still playing it because you think you can't get played if you know what's up. And as Dua says in the song, I could do this dance all night. Okay, overall, I like illusion a lot. I'm sure that is a surprise to nobody. I do think this was the first single out of the three where I was like, oh yeah, this is going to be in my rotation. Absolutely no ifs, ands, or buts about it. With Houdini, of course, I liked it from the first listen, but I do remember being a little bit disappointed because I thought we were going to get something weird, something super, super out there psychedelic and crazy. And the song just wasn't necessarily that, but at this point I've made my peace with it. And with Training Season, even though I did like that one a lot, which I said when I first heard it, in this past couple of weeks, it has grown on me, I would say, twice as much. Like, I'm listening to it all the time. 
But with the illusion, there was an immediate thought of like, yep, this is going to be in the rotation. Absolutely, absolutely. And like on the second list of the song, it was confirmed. And another thing I think it is with me is obviously I love those bombastic dance pop songs. And out of the three singles so far, this one definitely has the most quote unquote energy in it. And also that ooh, what you doing part and the way that Dua sings illusion got stuck in my head almost immediately. Like I said in the training season video, one thing about her lyrics that makes her songs do well is that they're super catchy, they're super easy to learn, they get stuck in your head pretty quickly, and that's no different here. Like with the other singles, there is an extended mix for Illusion, and I do think I like it more just because it gives the song a little more space to breathe, we get that bridge more than once, and I like how there's space for some instrumental between the chorus and the next verse. Like I said, the song gets to breathe. Honestly, I feel like the extended version should just be the actual versions of the singles, but I guess in the streaming economy, that is a big risk, so the audience gets to pick and she gets the streams for both. I do hope that there are songs on the album that are just about fun. Like, not like, oh, these men ain't shit, let's dance fun, I love my man, let's dance fun, but just let's dance. And I know she said, at least for Houdini, that she was in that sort of blah phase with relationships and writing that song, maybe some others for Radical Optimism, but I do hope there's just some more mindless escapist tracks. Like, not you telling me what you want to escape from, but we've just already escaped. But overall, like I said, enjoyed Illusion, enjoyed the video, enjoyed the song. Let's get into Tanache. This one, I was going in blind. I hadn't seen any pictures from the video shoot, heard any teasers, none of that. And so I saw the thumbnail and was like, yep, we're about to get Nashe, we're about to get nasty, and she's about to dance down, and I am ready. A math girl, I am not, but I have noticed she's doing these like stylistic equations or expressions for this new era or second part of the era to go with the quantum baby theme. So I'm going to assume it's quantum physics, quantum mechanics, but I noticed it in the trailer, it's in this video of course, and it's also in the cover art for Nasty. Not sure if it being on the T means anything, you know, T for Tinashe, but it could just be for aesthetic purposes and means nothing really. I just don't know enough quantum physics to know. Actually, I don't know any quantum physics. And I was like, oh, look at Tinashe, look at her fixing a car and looking at doing it. And as soon as she started singing, I was like, yep, I'm gonna like this one. It's a very danceable mid-tempo R&B song. Like if you're familiar with Tinashe, this is Tinashe to a T. And at first to me, it was like ever so slightly giving all hands on deck vibes. So I do wonder if they have a similar BPM. And another thing that Tinashe does relatively often in her songs that she's doing again here, sounds like she's put an effect over her vocals when she's doing that talk singing part where she's saying, I've been a nasty girl. And it sounds like her voice has been put in a compressor or something for effect to play up that electronic sound that a lot of her songs have. I guess I'm enough, they say I'm an athlete. Is somebody gonna match my freak? And we get those little sticky sounding electronic drums also, though they're pretty faint. This dance break is nuts, and honestly, just the dancing in general, as is typical with Tinashe. Like, if you watch a Tinashe video performance, you know you're about to get some dancing, duh, but it's always just so entertaining to watch. And I did watch her Coachella set too, and of course she killed it, and she did perform Nasty for the first time at Coachella. The mic was on as well, and the set list was very good, and I am so mad that she did All My Friends. I just saw her in early February, and I would have screamed and cried if I saw her do that song live. So if you were there, you were lucky. But anyways, not the drum coming for her in her Telfar, I would have had to take them out too. And at first I thought she was just fixing a car to go hang out with the piece, but looking back, it looks like she's in some sort of post-apocalyptic future, being hunted down by some sort of enemy, but she knew they were far away enough for her to have time for her and her little crew to hit a dance break. And I like this phase that she's been in with the BB Angel era so far. Like the songs are more grown up, way more sexual, honestly. But there's also a soft side to them and little moments where Tinashe has a lyric and you're kind of like, aw, even if the overall song is freaky. And sometimes it's like, aw, in a cute way. And other times it's aw, and like, that's kind of sad and vulnerable, but I do understand it sort of way. And I'm also enjoying how she's leaning more into this electronic sound, which she's been doing for years, kind of dabbling in and out of it, you know, doing it here and there on projects. But it seems a little bit more overt now, like you're supposed to be reminded a lot of these sounds are man-made, but it looks like she's liking to work more technology into her shows, into her performances, and into her music lately. And that's not in a bad way, because she's still able to put a lot of life and energy into these songs, and even more so when they're performed live. And one thing I did notice about Nancy is that this song's got more of a traditional song structure with at least two verses and a refrain and a chorus. And I did notice on BB Angel, Needs actually being a prime example, is that Tanasha's been experimenting a lot with song structure lately. 
But like I said, here you get something more traditional. You still get sort of an empty chorus with Tanasha repeating that I've been a nasty girl. But there's this thing that she always does where the chorus might sound a little bit repetitive, but then she's got a refrain where she's actually going to show up and put the vocals down there in the song. Yes, I like Nasty. It's a little cute lead into the next part of the album, Quantum Baby. I'm wondering if over on the project we're going to go a little bit lighter this time because even though the songs on BB Angel, a lot of them were pretty up-tempo, some of them were a bit heavier about problems, unrequited feelings, things of the like. So I can't tell yet because, you know, Tanisha has always got a little bit of apathy in her lyrics, if you will. But, you know, we'll see and I'm excited to see. Ooh, maybe not empathy. Maybe that's not a good word, but sometimes you just can't tell where she stands. Like she might pour her whole heart out in lyrics and be like, never mind, I didn't like you anyway, and then just start dancing. All right, time for Chloe. So this one, I saw the teaser clip that she posted and off the bat, it reminded me of That's What I Want from Lil Nas X, which is one of my favorites from him. And both of those songs kind of give a Hey Ah by Outkast vibe, which is something a lot of people have already said about That's What I Want. And Chloe did actually just give an interview for Rolling Stone where she did in fact say that Boy Bye is inspired by Outkast as well as Khalees actually and some other artists. And when it comes to this new song Boy Bye that I just dropped, you know, even with Have Mercy, I've always loved Khalees. She inspired me with Have Mercy, you know, the I'm Bossy song, and then Caught Out There, she inspired me with that for Boy Bye as well as Icona Pop and Outkast. So I have inspiration from everywhere that I'm pulling from to these songs. Like looking at the video, it looks like we're getting a little storyline. She's a little camper girl. She looks good. I love the little shoulder like dread bob she's doing every time. Every time her and Hallie are out, the dreads look different. I love it. Okay, yes, I love the little pop, rocky, neo soul vibe this song has. I personally, I love Pop Chloe, and the vocals are stacked and layered as always. And again, we're getting the, this man sucks, I'm taking off with my girls, we're hanging out, the top is down. So many songs about men just not being shit, like that's not new at all, but for some reason I'm just noticing the frequency lately with these singles. And they're obviously not connected, but I was just talking about them back to back in this video. The girls are in the desert. The girls are in the desert. Tanache was just in the desert. Chloe's just in the desert. Is I don't know. Is it a perfect way to represent like I'm in a drought? The relationships are not giving. The partners are not giving. I want a little bit more. And for Chloe specifically, I do feel like she has a lot of songs about getting cheated on, getting mistreated, getting played. Even some of the songs that she's done with Hallie. And again, also kind of typical of Chloe, we get the sense of you ain't shit, but I do still kind of love you. Because it's even to the point where this man is calling her from unavailable numbers, giving her anxiety. I love the way that she sings anxiety, by the way. But at the end of the pre-chorus, she's still like, but I love you though. But by the end of the song, she does swear it's over for good. Boy, bye for real this time. So fingers crossed. And then we get the shot of the little wedding scene that was in the teaser. And oh my God, I love this outfit. I love this look. Here's Chloe and her piano. It's just Looks like she's on some sort of haunted football field, like in a little teen, I was gonna say rom-com, not rom-com, little teen a horror movie. Like maybe this is her saying she was ready to marry whoever the song is about, maybe it's not that at all and she just wanted to serve the look or it's just for the symbolism in the song. Then at the end, it looks like she's got girls holding up signs, like something that they would write or say to the boy who F them over as their own personal boy by it looks like. But yes, this one was fun. And I do like this one just a touch more than FYS. I like that one though, but y'all know an upbeat song is always going to get me. And I also like that Chloe is trying new sounds. So it's like, she's not afraid to try new things. But the only thing that I'm struggling to figure out is like, ooh, what is Chloe's sound? But maybe that's something that she's working through also right now. And we're just getting, you know, to watch. And Chloe did debut Boy Bye at Coachella. She sounded good. The earrings are cute. Choreography down. Bits of Hey Y'all were actually mixed into the song. I had a great time watching her set. Oh my God, the FIS Body Persuasive Mix. I <laughs> had a good time. I had a great time. She said her sophomore album is coming this year, so I'm going to assume FYS and Boy Bye are singles for that upcoming album. And so I guess we're going to have that to look forward to whenever it's announced, whenever it comes out. As always, do be sure to let me know your thoughts, let me know your feelings. Honestly, me personally, three for three for all of them. And they're all very fun. They're all very springy, all very summery. Perfect time to roll these out because it's getting warm outside. I've been spending more and more time outside with every passing week. 
And so now these songs get to make it into my playlist when I'm doing my drives, doing my walks, doing my whatevers. And I'm excited to see how these eras pan out. Like with Tinashe, I'm ready for Quantum Baby part two. Apparently, apparently this is gonna be a three part project. I thought it was just gonna be two parts. So we are gonna have a third part after Quantum Baby. Who Tinashe is feeding us. Then with Miss Chloe, I'm excited for this new album, this new era, two singles so far. Don't think the project is titled. I'm not sure what we're gonna get because FYS was like more of that R&B realm. But then like in that Rolling Stone interview, Chloe was talking about Outkast. She's talking about Icona Pop. She's talking about Khalees. And like her bringing up Khalees and Outkast are big ones for me because Outkast and Khalees, those are artists that first thing that comes to mind when I'm thinking of their music is blending genres. Like they're always gonna inject a little bit of funk, a little bit of R&B, hip hop, a little bit of soul, rock into their pop music. And that's when the songs are overtly pop. But you know, I'm praying for pop Chloe. <laughs> so yes, I'm excited to see what she does, what she fuses, what she comes up with. And then last but not least, Miss Duel with Illusion. I do think, I saw people talking about this in pop heads and I agree that this is gonna be the single that injects a little bit more life into this era because it's been a little muted, it's been a little quiet because of those gaps in between the first two singles and because the training season video was a little underwhelming to people. So I really hope this picks up some momentum, gets people more radically optimistic. I'm optimistic, let me know your thoughts. Are you optimistic? Are you pessimistic? Let me know all three of the singles down below. As always, thank you so much for watching. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe so that you can stick around for more. And if you'd like to become a channel member and get early access to videos, the link is in the description. Again, thank you so much for watching. I love you all so very much and we'll see you so very soon. Bye-bye.